dream. You are falling, lost in the listening distance, as dark locks in. <laughs> Nightfall. Good evening. Tonight we have a special treat for you. A new production of a story that refuses to die. I ask those of you who may have heard it before to warn your loved ones that we are about to present The Monkey's Paw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that was lovely. <laughs> Well, I hope I remember how to behave at table. Oh, come now, Sergeant Major. You may find us the barbarians, Jeremy. The manners of the outpost of empire we hear, they're refined beyond anything we could dream. Oh, uh, in a sergeant's mess in hmm? India, on the frontier. <laughs> Are you sorry to have left it, sir? Oh, what, the frontier? Oh, I'm afraid, Herbert, that I've brought too much of it back with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing shows good manners like a, a healthy appetite, Sergeant oh, Major. Do us some more. Well, I don't mind if I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, thank you, that ain't <laughs> Oh, you've done yourself proud, you two. This house. Well, it's been a struggle. But it's paid for. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, but. £200. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to earn that. Oh, you're working already, lad. I am. I'm apprenticing to be a stationary engineer. Oh. More in Meggins. Oh, the old works are still going strong. Huge now. Oh. Jeremy, you'd not know the place oh. and the machinery. Terrifying. I had one look inside. The whirling and banging and sparks <laughs> and smoke. Uh. A former Smithy says, if you like working at Moor and Megan's, you'll feel at home in a battlefield. <laughs> like Chinese Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, have you missed England all these years, Sergeant Major? Missed it? <laughs> oh, Fred's never told you about my family, eh? They weren't as well off as his. Well off. In the county workhouse. There's no job in a fine shop for me. If it wouldn't, dear. Yes, we remember our young days fondly, don't we? The anger fades. You've done well in the army. Very well. Oh, I'm still breathing, yes. <laughs> China, Africa, India. Most of all, I'd like to see India. India? Oh, you're better off where you are, lad. There's too much everything, India. There's too many things off the map. Off the map? Here. Yeah. Show you something. What's that? Oh, small animal's foot. Well, not quite. It's a monkey's paw. Oh, what are you doing with a thing like that? Oh, well, perhaps I shouldn't be showing it. Jeremy, don't, don't put it away. Let's see it. Here, give us a look. Well, I, I didn't mean to. You're, you're turning all red. Caught you out, eh? A secret? Oh, secrets. 21 years in India. <laughs> Yeah, you remember the upbringing that you and I had, Fred? The Queen, England, Empire, John Wesley and all? Uh -huh. And then suddenly to be plunged into a world where gods have arms like beetles' legs. Uh, that, 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 that's blasphemous! <laughs> Sir, will the monkey's fingers work if you pull the tendons? Like a rabbit's foot. No, oh, I'm, I'm leaving the table if, if this talk keeps on. Ah, don't get carried away, Dorothy. I, I must tell you. See, I was in India less than a fortnight when I was trapped in the midst of a festival called the Kali Puja. It's the darkest night of the month. Adoration of Kali, wife of Kala, god of death and of time. Only a great slaughter of sheep and goats can appease her. Single saber stroke to lop off the beast's head. Oh, 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 Sergeant Major, please. <laughs> that, Mrs. Todd, is India. That cannot be all of India. No, no, there is gentleness there, too. But it's the mysteries of India that stay with you. There's no way to shake them. You think you have as you sail up past Aden and the Suez. You feel you're a sensible, no-nonsense Englishman again. And then, out of the blue, in a cottage as cosy as this, the shock of something quite... 
quite... Something quite frightful. Like your monkey's paw. I'd rather you forgot it. Let's see it again. Just once more. Oh, very well. If you insist. Uh, look at it. It's an ordinary little paw dried to a mummy. May I, sir? <laughs> what? Examine it? See if you can find the mystery. Tendon's too dry to move. Well, better look next time. So what's special about it? A spell. Put on it by a holy man, a fakir. Spell? To prove that fate rules our lives. How? He decreed that three people, each in turn, would have three wishes granted by it. Three people, three wishes, and no more. <laughs> did the three people get their wishes? Two did. The third is yet to come. Jeremy, you've not given it a whirl. I have. That was the second. Um, were they... Granted, they were. What were they? Oh, they were small enough. But I shall never tell how they were answered. <laughs> oh, my. Sergeant Major, you are making a fine spoof of it. Even your face has gone white. Yes. And, uh... The first person who wished was a friend of mine, a lance corporal from Aberdeen. I don't know his first two wishes. His third was for death. That's how I got the poor. But you finished with it? And you still keep it? But what good is it now, sir? <laughs> I did have some idea of selling it, but no. Jeremy, if you... Talk up that monkey's paw with others as convincingly as you've done with us. It's caused enough mischief. If you could have another three wishes, sir, would you want them? No. My God, no. No one must ever ask a wish of this thing again. Now I'll be done with it. Jeremy, what did you do that for? Toss it in the fire. Get up and fish it out. Hurry, hurry. Right. Barely caught. A few hairs. Back in the fire, lad. Let it burn. If you don't want it, Jeremy, give it to me. Here, Dad. If you keep it, Fred, don't you blame me for what happens. Fair enough, Jeremy. No, don't be a fool. Pitch it on the fire like a sensible fellow. How does it work, hmm? What's the magic trick? You're serious? Serious as you, Jeremy. You're the one who convinced us this thing works. <laughs> you hold it in your right hand and make your wish aloud. <laughs> That's all. Except for the consequences. <laughs> what you might do, Fred, dear, wish for another caravans from India for me. <laughs> all the work around the south. If you <laughs> must wish, wish for something sensible. Sensible? I warn you, the spell of the paw is no joke. Oh, sensible. Sensible. <laughs> I, I, I'll put it away. I can't take this seriously now. You will. <laughs> when you discover the joke is on you. Good night. Oh, that was really lovely. Nice to see you. Bye, Jeremy. Uh, come see us again. Oh, I will. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Lovely. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Herbert, shouldn't you be changing your clothes and getting off to the works? More in leggings? Mm. Not an hour yet. Till the midnight shift. I like your Sergeant Major, Fred. Do you know? He's changed. But uh, most of the lad I knew is still there. Any of the lad he knew here, Dad? Oh, <laughs> not bloody likely. Catch me believing a yarn like that. Did you give him anything for it, dear? The monkey's paw. Oh, a trifle. He didn't want to take it, but I made him. Ah, some money banking him. And he took advantage of you. I like him the better for that. He placed me again. 
to throw it away. Not bloody likely. Why, we're going to be rich. And I'll refuse to work nights at Mo and Megan. <laughs> Wish to be a nun for her, Freddy. Mm. Looks like... Yeah, see, it looks like the... The end of a child. Shouldn't be so greedy on your first wish, Dad. I mean, an emperor has a lot to ask. I don't know what to ask for, that's a fact. Well, if you've got everything you want, I've not. Good. You take it and wish. All that thing in my hand, I couldn't. What about the mortgage, Mum? Dad, have you cleared that? The 200 pounds? Hey, would you like that, Dorothy? Not too grasping? Frivolous? Oh, I don't know when you two are serious. As serious as you, Mum. Do it, Dad. <clears throat> I wish. I wish. Don't anybody giggle. I. I wish for two hundred pounds. No! Has it? What is it, Dad? It moved. What? The monkey's paw. Cool that. Stiff and solid as a walnut, then suddenly... What? It twisted in my hand. <laughs> but look, there's no money coming out of the wall. Right, look at your wallet, Fred. It's the most sensible place for wish for money to appear. Yeah. Oh, feels no fatter. One pound, two shillings. Well, so much for that. Oh, yeah, but pick up the paw before you step on it. Shall I give it to the cat? But put it on the shelf. As I wish, it twisted my hand like a snake. Nonsense, Fred, it's just your fancy. Well, no, I'm done. <laughs> give me a shot, all the same. Mm. Well, come on, Dorothy. Off to bed. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, but you will put the cat out when you take off to work. Right. And the light. I will. Night, Mum. Dad. Night. Any of the lad you know here. I can dawdle. I do hope it doesn't rain before Herbert gets off shift and oh. home. What are you looking at? Out window. There's a man out there on the street. Oh, never seen a man out there. Oh, he's peering at the house. That's the fourth time he's passed the gate. Hmm. Oh, real tough. And he's coming in. Oh, dear. Answer the door, Freddy, while I get rid of this apron. He's not a lord, Dorothy. Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Todd, I come from Mo and Megan's. Oh, oh do come in, won't you? Thank you. <clears throat> My missus. How do you do? Hey, my name's Tilbury. I was asked to call on you. Oh, uh, excuse the mess, uh, uh, Mr. Tilbury. We weren't expecting to sit down. I'll not include more than a moment. He's come from Moore and Megan's, dear. Oh. Uh -huh. Is anything wrong? Nothing's happened to her, but... There, there, Dorothy. Don't jump to conclusions. Mrs. Todd. Mr. Todd. Oh. I'm sorry. He's hurt. He's... Is he hurt? I'm afraid... Aye, he's badly hurt. But he's not in any pain. Oh, thank God. So, you see, Freddy, it's not so bad. I, I thought... Oh! I was afraid. But it's not so bad. He's all right. No. It's not. Your Herbert was caught in the machinery, Mrs. Dodd. He was drawn in among the pulleys and the big flywheel. Caught? In the machinery? What's he saying, Fred? Don't believe him. 
No, he's been such a careful boy, Herbert. Oh, where he is. Mr. Dooley, they've mistaken him for some other... other... Get him, Fred. Get him. He was the only one left. We lost three babies. We, we all wish we could undo this. It's hard. <clears throat> the firm wishes me to convey their sincere sympathy with you and your great loss, and I'm to say that Moore and Meggins disclaim all liability, but in consideration of your son's services, they wish to present you with a certain sum as compensation. How? Oh. How? Oh. What? Two hundred pounds. You didn't say two hundred. Here, Mr. Todd. Come back, Dorothy. What are you doing out of bed? What was I doing in bed? Aren't you cold? Does it matter? No. Nothing matters. Yes. It matters that you don't... Don't what? Come back to bed. You catch your death, my dear, wandering about in the middle of the night... Fred, why have we forgotten the paw, the monkey's paw? Now, yeah, what's the matter? What? what? Want it? Want it? Yeah. You've not destroyed it. I've not touched it. No, why should I? Since I made that wish and dropped it. Where is it? I don't know. Didn't Herbert pick it up? It's not in his pocket. He didn't take it with I him. Think he, um... He set, he set it down somewhere in the park. <laughs> oh, but, uh, I, I just now thought of it. Why didn't we before? Think of what? The other two wishes. We only made one. Was that not enough? No. We'll have one more. Go down and get it, Fred. Quickly. We'll wish our boy alive again. Oh, God, you're mad. My wish and what happens at the works at Moore and Megan said nothing. Nothing to do with each other. Oh, get it. Get it quickly. And we... Dorothy, for God's sake. Get it. Get it. Get get you it. don't know what wait. you're asking. Go. Come back to me. Oh, we had the first wish granted. Why not the second? A coincidence. Go no, and get it and wish, Fred. Dorothy. Hard Herbert has been dead for ten days. He was smashed and pulled apart by those shots and the flywheel. I could only recognize him by the bits of his clothing. If he was too terrible for anyone to see, then how could you... Bring know? back. Do you think I fear this lost child I bore? I nursed him. I raised him. Am I to fear him now? All right. All right, Dorothy. So be it. We'll go downstairs and ask... It... For Herbert... Fred, wish for our son. It's foolish and wicked. Do it. As Sergeant Major Morris told you to, hold it in your right hand and wish aloud. But remember, Jeremy warned us of the consequences. The third wish was for... Wish. I wish my son alive. Nothing. 
Thank God. It didn't even move in my hand. Oh, but you wish. Exactly as Jeremy instructed. Then why? Oh, my darling. We can't have what nature won't allow. Come back to bed now, Dorothy. There's a good girl. Come along now. Yes, Fred. I'll be up. Herb. Please. It's her bat. I don't hear anything. It's our son. It's him. Dorothy, for God's sake, stay here. Don't go down. Let go of me. Oh, of course he couldn't get there soon. Now the cemetery's two miles away. Dorothy, there's nothing. Don't go. Why are you holding me back? Let go. <laughs> there he is. I've got to open the door for him. You can't let it in. Our own son. Afraid of him, your own son. I'm afraid for you. You didn't see him when they pulled him from the flywheel. And he's been ten days in the air. Let me go. I'm coming, Herbert. I'm coming. the door. Banging in the wind. All so natural. Nothing out of place. See? 
You wished her but dead. You sent him back to his grave. You wouldn't have wanted him alive. So mutilated and in such agony. Why didn't you wish him alive and whole? Why didn't you, with your last wish, wish him whole? Oh, oh God. Why? Why didn't I? Oh, so natural. Nothing out of place. You have just heard The Monkey's Paw, the short story by W. W. Jacobs, dramatized for radio by Len Peterson. Featured tonight were Ruth Springford and Eric House as Mom and Dad Todd. Chris Wiggins as the Sergeant Major. Michael Wincott as Herbert. And Graham Haley as Mr. Tilbury. Our recording engineer is John Jessup, with sound effects by Bill Robinson. The senior script editor is John Douglas, and our production assistant is Doris Buchanan. Nightfall is produced and directed for CBC Radio by Bill Howell. And now, here's a final word from your host. Hello again. Next week, we'll explore uncharacteristic behavior in the animal kingdom. But we can't promise that our animals won't resemble humans. What are you afraid of? Wildcats. Wildcats? They come in the dark. I can't stand to hear them shriek when the moon is full. Wildcats? In this part of the country? They only come when we're alone. Wildcats, the Christian Noack short story, translated from the original German and dramatized especially for this series by Otto Lowy, starring Ruth Springford and Jane Mallett. Radio for distaff animal lovers. That's next week. A nightfall. Until then, careful of the edge. <laughs> Funds for the distribution of this NPR Playhouse presentation were provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This is NPR, National Public Radio. <laughs>